Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I think I'll just make a start now on the on this uh, short webinar on business continuity for home working. Um, my name is Peter Joe. I'm the CEO and founder of Intergence, uh, and we've also got Dave Poulton, who's uh, who's the Chief Technology Officer CTO for Intergence. Um, just a short introduction, really, which was that um, the reason for this webinar was uh, really inspired by a good friend of mine last week. Um, who was desperately seeking a solution to keep his business running. Um, he was beside himself, like many other people at the moment, as to how we actually um, serve our clients and keep the business running properly. And uh, he asked me a few things, and I was able to give him a few tips, which made quite a big difference. And I thought there must be many other people like him around. So um, that was what really uh, meant that we, we got this thing together in um, Breakneck speed, really. So hopefully, um, we're going to be able to talk through some of the things that we've learned over the last couple of years. You can see um, the agenda we've got here. There's only um, seven or eight things that we're going to talk through. These are key things we found, and some background to um, why we've done this in the first place. And our business has actually remained reasonably resilient to uh, some of the things we're going to talk about here. Uh, and the reason we actually started this process some two years ago was pretty much because we had two of our big clients who had experienced major disasters and we had to help them recover from those disasters. Um, and through that process, as we were setting our service centre up, we were fairly determined we weren't going to um, suffer the same experiences they had. So we learned from some of their experiences. So um, th those are the key reasons we uh, we decided to go down um, the process of looking at pretty much every part of our business. So we started with the business strategy. Um, so looking really at everything that we were doing, um, all the business processes. So what would happen effectively if we had a major crisis, our service center uh, was taken out? Could we still offer our full services to our clients? Um, and also operate as normally as possible. So uh, we reviewed the whole business end to end, um, every process, and we were looking for single points of failure in the business. So that basically meant um, looking at every, say every process, um, every part of the business. Um, and what we actually found was that um, most of the things we were doing, and this by the way, doesn't apply to every business, but we were able to identify um, certain groups um, who couldn't move. Um, but when we actually looked at the technology we, we had on offer to us, we could actually solve most of the problems by just changing a few things and using technology to help us. We even looked at um, all of the HR and contracts because, again, you've got to make sure you put those contracts in place for people to allow them to work from home effectively. Um, and then Dave Poulton um, conducted a very comprehensive technology audit because a lot of the uh, technology we had was was on prem. Probably the most key thing we did was we actually gained consensus from all of the senior leadership team that this was the right way uh, to go. Um, and I think that's a key thing for any of you who are involved in the technology scene is that you do need to have that um, senior uh, executive management buy in. And that was actually unanimous that we should go down this route. The other key thing was to set some some realistic timescales. Um, we wanted them aggressive because obviously this was fairly important to our business. Um, uh, but certainly from our point of view, we we thought that if we set a reasonable timescale, then we could get that um, pretty much achieved. Yes, and uh, I think just reiterating uh, Peter there on. Uh, some of the cloud first thinking strategy that you need to have. Um, certainly leadership buy-in uh, has to be seen as uh, to have support throughout the entire organization with the business, business and employee benefits clearly articulated along with any trials or and feedback on experience and flexible working. Um, assess what the business impact is of transition to, uh, to a cloud first strategy and identify suitable cloud and SaaS uh, service applications that can bring those quick wins and savings as well. Then migrate to the low risk quick win services uh, first, 
um, and start using those um, um, and so seeking out the benefits and ROIs that you'll that you'll save from doing that. And of course, you've got the old adage of, uh, you know, of course you can't manage what you can't measure. So um, you need to make sure that you uh, put some modern-based tooling in there um, to to be able to measure, optimize, and tune the services as you move forward. And indeed, bring maybe bringing things in and out um, as you as as you know as strategy demands. So one of the things that, um, in fact, in many cases, you can you can really get things moving quickly on is the is the management systems. So what we mean by management systems here is um, the back office functions. So all businesses need robust management systems. I'm sure most of you have got them. But the key thing is, is that um, can you actually migrate them to the cloud? Now, this is one of the going back to my original statement. This is one of the challenges my friend had was um, he had on prem um accounting systems he didn't know how to change that so we helped him um do that as a favor which which actually he discovered he could move things much more quickly than he realized so um as dave said what you can't measure you can't manage so you need to be able to measure um realistically what you're doing and which parts of your business you need to change um can i trade purely electronically well that was a key question that we wanted to to answer and we found that we could actually do pretty much everything um, electronically and remotely um, and the key thing is all systems whether it's accounting whether it's hr legal needs to be cloud-based um, and you can see there i've included as many things as i can payroll sales ledger purchase ledger um, hr and legal even our even our guest management system when we're working in the office is cloud-based more importantly than that even, can we help our staff remotely from an HR perspective? So for example, you know, well-being, um, we're actually using Microsoft Teams to do collaboration work. That's worked really effectively. I know there was a, a problem earlier in the week with Teams, but generally speaking, we found it has been fantastically effective in terms of um, being able to collaborate. One small tip I would recommend is that Teams obviously has a video conferencing. It's really important that actually you can see each other. Some people don't uh, block their their uh, video conferencing off. From a point of view of morale, well-being, it's really important we can all see each other during these difficult times. Um, one question that people have is, um, how are people being uh, working remotely? So um, the key thing here is you need to empower your staff. It's not about control of those members of staff. Um, they are your most valuable asset alongside your clients. You keep your staff happy um, and you can uh, give them the real ability to try and work remotely. Uh, it does make a massive difference. Obviously, at the moment, there's people worrying about whether, in fact, uh, they can support their families at home, whether it be children or grandparents or whatever. Um, if they can work effectively, it will take a huge load off them and the productivity of the business will carry on probably almost as normal as it would be if they were working in the office. Uh, and the last statement really is to just say that teams, and we found this even this week, we've been hugely product, um, uh, productive um, when they're being empowered and not controlled. Which kind of leads me on to the next slide, which I think, um, Dave. <clears throat> All businesses, All right. yeah. Sorry. So, yeah. So, so, so I think the key thing here really is conducting um, quick wins. You know, the, do a gap analysis on um, what you can do really quickly, uh, what's going to work and what isn't going to work, and which systems are vital to keep the business running um, and servicing your customers. So, I mentioned briefly accounting. That's really important. We moved that into the cloud really early on in our cycle of moving everything to a cloud first uh, environment. Um, check the staff are available to work from home. Some don't have that capability. So again, you need to make sure that that is going to work properly for them. Um, particularly in the current environment, make sure you divide into two teams. Uh, people forget that if one um, member, key member of the team gets the virus, uh, they can transmit it very easily to another. So it's important those two teams don't meet, which is another good reason at the moment for deploying them remotely from home. Um, I've probably gone on a bit about 
providing cloud deployment for key functions such as accounting. But um, as I said earlier, pretty much everything we do is now cloud-based. Um, and the last and probably most important point is um, we've got a cloud-based call center for key staff and client contact as well. So again, our clients, um, our clients are aware we do this, but they they provide, uh, we provide a complete contact center capability so we can log calls and everything else. And again, Teams, using Teams for collaboration work has been really important. And I think it's also important to look at uh, you know, new and emerging technologies such as Windows Virtual Desktop, uh, where uh, we've now developed a flexible uh, cloud desktop solution uh, design that uh, we're hopefully going to be trying ourselves, and, and not because we haven't got laptops and can work from home, but you know, um, when you look at the problem statement out there for companies today that uh, are going through this crisis that haven't got enough laptops or uh, for remote working, or the current laptops are too old and slow, you know, VPNs are creaking, they're falling over because they're not scaled to be able to do uh, the or to deal with the large numbers of uh, of people coming in, etc., and uh, being able to work flexibly and securely, um, you know, WVD gives that greater choice um, and allows people to even use their own devices and have the same experience across all all platforms, um, and gives you uh, as a as a as an IT owner or whatever uh, the ability to be able to securely uh, have a have a virtual desktop that you can uh, control uh, access to accordingly so uh, it's very uh, very important um, in terms of uh, our approach uh, uh, insurgents what uh, what we did um, um, as Peter alluded to earlier is that um, we um, did some extensive auditing on all our on-prem uh, Business applications um, that were that were in operation. That's not just uh, back office info, um, systems, but also operational systems. Um, and we we it also gave us a chance to to consolidate, um, get some get some new uh, technology in, involved, um, and one some with more capability, so we could kind of collapse two or three products into one through unified uh, uh, applications that we were using. Um, understanding the uh, you know the current service center on-prem systems and that and being able to move that all to cloud-based and real flexibility around how you can operate and uh, uh, within those environments using cloud-first technology. Um, another key thing on step two was actually uh, to identify the business cloud requirements. So you know uh, what do we you know is it AWS, uh, Azure, whatever you know identifying what's best fit to take your applications and be able to uh, migrate those really quickly and easily. Um, for us, it was Azure and GCP for our uh, Microsoft and, um, and our Stratium uh, systems. Um, on, and also identifying key SaaS business applications. So 0365 is a bit of a no-brainer, but allows you for any, to have any on-prem stuff like um, Microsoft Exchange being easily transitioned into an 0365 environment uh, quickly and logged. A lot of that productivity continues then. ITSM tooling, we had on-prem ITSM systems, we moved that totally to cloud-based um, for greater flexibility. We migrated all our uh, data um, to it fairly easily and it, uh, and it runs fantastically well now. Um, we ran a few POCs as well to make sure that the identified applications kind of met with what we wanted. So we, so we you know, as part of that um, audit of on-prem, we also, uh, um, we also went through and ticked out all of the um, all of the key uh, requirements that we needed to, for, for the for SaaS based uh, applications to work properly. And again, um, having a greater integration through a API integration into our Stratium operational intelligence platform was also key, where we bring everything together and be able to blend that data in order to go, give us the the insights that we have that uh, differentiates our services. Um, then we uh, sort of migrated uh, a lot of this stuff. Some stuff from SaaS point of view was pretty, pretty almost straight away. Uh, we parallel ran some systems uh, about 30 days before kind of switching them off and uh, um, and then running completely free on cloud first operation. Um, and we, you know, continue to measure and improve. There's some tooling that we've moved in and uh, additional ones, and and some we've moved out because we've got we've got better options and things like that to us now. So. 
the whole thing has been a complete success. And although you could never have foreseen what is going on in the world today, um, our, you know, ourselves as a business, um, is, it's amazing how uh, productive it is. It's, uh, it's incredible. So um, I think just in summary, um, the, the key things really that uh, you probably need to look at are um, make sure you can you can adopt a cloud first uh, approach on things, but but more important than that, the quick wins. There are a number of things that can be done relatively quickly in a few days to make your workforce more productive and easier to work from home. So you know, we mentioned accounting packages, um, Dave's mentioned ITM solutions. Um, there's a whole raft of things that can be done quite quickly without necessarily um spending weeks i mean we we did ours pretty quickly but uh, there are some businesses that that don't work as quickly as we were able to however um there's a needs must situation at the moment and dave's mentioned um windows virtual desktop that's something we're looking at that can be deployed very quickly um it's something i think that everybody should be looking at um and certainly from our point of view in terms of the way we're operating now um, the, the contact centre uh, capability is something we found uh, massively useful in terms of providing the same level of service to our customers. Um, so that's really it. It was a very short webinar. Uh, we will be making this available as a podcast. Um, please do feel free to phone us if you feel there's anything that you found particularly relevant or you need more information or help on. Uh, and we'll do to what we can to pass on um, some of our expertise at the moment, we're in a, in a state where we're trying to look to help as many people as possible. So uh, we don't mind taking the odd call. We're not expecting to be paid for it. We just want to make uh, sure that uh, uh, both our existing clients and potential people that we want to talk to have got some extra help. So thank you for listening in, and um, we look forward to uh, hearing from you again soon. Thank you.